In this video, I will be introducing you to the concept of Green's functions. Green's functions are very useful for solving non-homogeneous differential equations and they also come in handy while dealing with scattering theory in quantum mechanics and also in path theoretical formalisms. Let us consider an example where I have a particle moving in a resistive medium in one dimensions. Okay, so you can think of it like you know you have a sort of a table so it offers certain coefficient of resistance and you have a particle sitting on it and so the idea is like if there is nothing acting on the particle that the particle is at rest right and then um, I can always uh, subject it to let us say you can put a pulley here right and then I can subject the particle to a constant force let us say right so that's a constant force mg acting on the particle so then how will the particles motion be okay so particle moving in a resistive medium so we have fixed it in one single direction so it's in 1d and it is subject to subject to an external force okay in general it can be some function f of t okay so one can always uh, generalize it by assuming that uh, you know uh, instead of this mg where it's a constant force i can always uh, assume that the particle is being pulled by a motor okay a dc motor or something like that and the dc motor is connected to a function generator okay so one can always feed any function so accordingly the motor will you know if it is linear enough it will try to directly affect the function onto the particle okay so the particle is obviously in a on top of a table or something like that so that we can assume that there is a resistance so how do i sort of solve this kind of a problem that is the question right first we have to obviously formulate the problem we know from newton's second law so we have mass into acceleration acceleration can be written as dv by dt uh, equal to the net force acting on it so we will uh, have this function f of t which is acting on it due to the function generator or due to this kind of a constant force and the resistive medium will try to offer certain resistance to uh, the particles motion so that means it will try to resist the you know motion and therefore it will be with a minus sign and we assume that it is proportional to v so the coefficient of resistivity is r so r times v should have the units of force so plus f of t so this is the kind of equation that we want to solve right so this is our let's say so here f of t is your uh, homo non homogeneous function right so otherwise we will have a homogeneous solution m dv by dt plus rv equal to 0 ok now what we will assume is like let us say that uh, you know a, a realistic scenario is uh, I switch on this motor or uh, you know I will be holding this mass and then at some time tau I will release it or at some time tau I will put on the function generator that means up to the time t equal to tau the particle is at rest the particle is basically at is at rest that means uh, basically v of t is equal to 0 for t less than tau now at time t equal to tau for a duration tau plus d tau right so that means for t equal to tau to tau plus delta tau where delta tau is an extremely small interval of time let us say I give the particle a blow a blow is given to the particle ok ok right now we are not solving directly 
neither for the function due to function generator nor due to the function okay we are typically talking that is uh, let's say the particle is basically sitting on the table and at some time t equal to tau for a duration of delta tau that means up to time t equal to delta tau i have given it a hit with a hammer okay so i had a hammer with which i hit this okay that's a simple blow and the hammer hit it for a duration of this so what happens to this particle its velocity is uh, something like this let us draw it in a different color so the particle its velocity if i try to plot v as a function of t up to t equal to tau the particle is at rest and from t equal to tau to delta tau the particle has been given an impulse okay this will be rising as sharply as possible and then that's it this is your tau and this is your tau plus delta tau and then the particle is left so the particle is from here onwards the particle has no force acting on it so because there is no force acting on it what you will see is you will that means for t greater than tau plus delta tau basically the equation that we have is m dv by dt equal to minus r times v because f of t is zero after that zero for t greater than tau plus delta tau so this can be easily solved this is a basically a simple equation so we can write it as dv by v equal to minus r by m times dt so integrating on both sides we get ln v equal to minus r by m times t plus some integration constant so if you were to take uh, exponential on both sides so we get v of t equal to exponential minus r by m times t plus c that is exponential c which i will call it as a into exponential minus r by m times t okay so this is the solution for t greater than tau plus delta tau now all that we need to do is to determine this a what is a so to determine a we need to apply the initial condition we need to apply the initial condition right so the initial condition is we have given it a blow between tau and tau plus delta tau so how to obtain that blow so what we have to do is we have to integrate this equation between tau and tau plus delta tau equation 1 so if you integrate equation 1 so let me call this as equation 2 in which we want to determine a so integrate in uh, equation 1 between tau and between tau and tau plus delta tau so what do we get so we get m times integral tau to tau plus delta tau dv by dt dt integral r times v dt plus integral tau to tau plus delta tau f of t dt okay so what will this give us so this will give us v m times v of tau plus delta tau minus v of tau equal to minus r times integral tau to tau plus delta tau v dt so you see basically like uh, okay when we integrate this we get uh, v squared by 2 um, and we assume that uh, the change in the velocity uh, 
the amount of effect of uh, r on the change in velocity is uh, almost negligible right because the resistive uh, medium hardly would do any you know uh, work within that small interval delta tau so in that sense we neglect this we assume it to be zero and here what we do is we assume that uh, the function almost is a constant let us say within that small interval so we can replace this by f of tau delta tau right that means we are assuming that uh, the function remains almost a constant in the interval delta tau right so therefore the integral is nothing but the area and that is f of tau is constant throughout the integral so that area is basically f of tau that is the magnitude of the blow into the time taken for delivering the blow okay so now what do we have so we have now we know already what is v of t for t greater than tau plus delta tau right so v of t is known it is a times x minus r by m times t so let me substitute that so m times a exponential minus r by m times t t is tau plus delta tau minus 0 v of tau you know at, at before at up to time t equal to tau the velocity is 0 so is equal to f of tau delta tau so basically if we assume that uh, delta tau is extremely small again exponential minus r by m delta tau will be equal to 1 so delta tau can be neglected here so what we will get is we get a as equal to f of tau delta tau divided by m into this exponential minus r by m times tau which it goes that side it will become exponential plus r by m times tau so this is an uh, some kind of approximations we have made and then finally obtained the value of a so therefore let's say this is equation 3 and we get our v of t so v of t will be equal to 0 for t less than tau and it is equal to f of tau delta tau by m times exponential minus r by m times t minus tau so minus or minus plus r by m tau okay for um, t that is t greater than tau you can say for t greater than tau and obviously at t equal to tau uh, you have the value basically coming out to be f of tau delta tau by m that is the magnitude of the force at uh, that is the magnitude of the velocity at due to the blow at the time t equal to tau into of course delta tau okay over a region delta tau over a time of uh, or an interval of time delta tau okay now let us assume that uh, we give two blows to the particle right one blow at time t equal to tau 1 for duration tau 1 plus delta tau and second blow so this is the first blow this is the second blow second blow at time t equal to tau 2 for again duration tau 2 plus delta tau so then what will be v so v of t in that case would be that is basically like you know now what we have seen is our velocity uh, you know it is uh, basically 0 up to time t equal to tau 1 and then you are given an impulse right so it start to falling down at some time t equal to tau 2 before it completely came down to 0 you gave it another impulse so again it goes down like that okay so what we are assuming here we are assuming that uh, you know the tau 1 is independent the blow given at tau 1 has nothing to do with the blow given at tau 2 because by that time it has already uh, you know it's, it's just reacting to the blow but the blow is not there anymore right the blow is completed so this blow is completely fresh blow which is given to the particle again at time tau equal to tau so we can easily solve this uh, in the same way so for z it will be 0 for t less than tau 1 now it will be same thing f of tau 
delta tau by m exponential okay you can say at tau 1 because you now it's at tau 1 minus r by m t minus tau 1 for uh, tau 1 less than t less than tau 2 but exactly at tau 2 again whatever be the solution that will be there plus again we have given it another blow which will again take it to an higher height so you will have this plus you will have an f of tau 2 delta tau which is the blow given at that time into exponential minus r by m t minus tau 2 so when you substitute t equal to tau 2 you get back your original uh, solution what it was supposed to be here and otherwise then after that of course because of tau 2 it will take this much of a blow this is the magnitude of the velocity due to the blow and then it will again start coming down exponential but of course the previous uh, data is already there so that also is added to this so that's why there will be overall this so this is for t greater than tau 2 so one can extend this for n number of blows so then the velocity v of t will be 0 for t less than tau 1 and then the rest of it will be a summation k equal to 1 to n so you will have f of tau k by m into delta tau uh, the interval time we are keeping as same it's always a very short duration okay into exponential minus r by m times t minus tau k so basically now you have tau k less than t less than tau k plus 1 and immediately one can see that uh, this could be easily converted into integral if the blows are continuous so you see whatever function you have let's say you have a constant function the way i told you that we can you know choose a mass m you know falling under gravity that's a constant function so f of t as a function of t will be a constant function right so basically like you know you are just think of it as you know various uh, blows of uh, same magnitude at regular intervals various blows of same magnitude at regular intervals so whatever is this magnitude okay and so now that can be assumed that it is continuous so when it is continuous what happens the summation will become an integral so if it is a continuous function if f of t is a series of blows which are continuous then we have v of t to be given as integral obviously at some time tau naught you know beyond which it is not zero to up to the time t whatever we are having it will be an integral it so it will become f of t the interval will become an instantaneous uh, quantity dt divided by m times exponential minus r by m times t minus tau okay or should i put it as i think i made a mistake it should have been f of tau right f of tau d tau divided by m times exponential minus r by m t minus tau so we can write it like this we can write it as integral tau naught to t i can keep my f of tau here and then write 1 by m exponential minus r by m t minus tau d tau okay so this here is basically if you observe carefully it is the solution to the problem for an unit impulse for a unit impulse and that is what we call as delta function and obviously the impulse is almost at instantaneous right so this is nothing but what we call as the Green's function g of t comma tau so g of t comma tau is basically the solution of the non-homogeneous problem where the non-homogeneous function is basically uh, substituted by the delta function so delta of t minus tau so when you substitute by delta of t minus tau the solution that you get is what we call as the Green's function now obviously we made a large number of uh, 
approximations as we are uh, discussing the solution and one has to check whether really the solution satisfies the differential equation or not. So, this solution should satisfy the differential equation 1. Okay? That means, if you are to calculate what is dv of t by dt, that means, what is d by dt of integral tau naught to t f of tau into this thing, right, 1 by m exponential minus r by m times t minus tau t. One should be careful when we are having the integration variables to be functions with which we are differentiating. So, we have to use Leibniz rule. Okay. So, the Leibniz rule basically tells you that if you have d by dt of let us say the intervals limits of integration are both functions of t and then if you have f of uh, or some g let us say g of t comma let us say tau d tau. So, when you take this differentiation inside then you will have d g of t comma tau by d t d tau. So, you need to integrate this. Uh, so, when you integrate you will get uh, g. So, basically you will have two more values. One you will have here. Okay. So, you have to substitute for tau as basically b of t into differentiation of b of t by dt minus g of t comma integration variable is tau which will be substituted by a of t into d of a d of d a by d t d of t d by d t. So, that is Leibniz rule we have to apply this rule and uh, see whether what happens to dv by dt. So, your dv by dt will become integral tau naught to t d by dt of f of tau. So, f of tau is independent f of tau d by dt of by m also will come out exponential minus r by m t minus tau d tau plus whatever is the function the total function is basically f of tau so, now tau should be substituted wherever tau is the integration variable. So, wherever tau is there, you substitute the uh, upper integral limit t f of t by m into exponential minus r by m t minus t into differentiation of t with respect to t. And the second uh, limit is uh, going to give you 0 because d tau by dt is 0. Tau naught is basically a constant, right? t equal to tau naught is some constant. So, that is 0. So, dt by dt is 1 and exponential t exponential 0 is 1. So, basically you get f of t by m and uh, when you integrate this, what do you get? When you integrate this, you get a minus r by m times exponential minus r by m t minus tau. So, minus r by m will come out. So, you have tau naught to t f of tau by m into exponential minus r by m t minus tau d tau plus f of t by m. <coughs> and uh, this integral here is nothing but the velocity. So, you have minus r by m times v plus f of t by m. So, it satisfies the differential equation. Hence, it is the correct solution. Let us uh, stop here and then take another example which is in spatial domain next. <coughs>